reaction from the complainant? Well, I think police need some information, but they've got to be proportionate and they've got to be sensitive and they've got to achieve that uh, reclamation of data in the quickest and uh, most delicate way possible. And what actually, I think it, it's reasonable that the police need perhaps some telephone data, but there's a concern that when we already have uh, a lousy rate for rape convictions in the United Kingdom, that then rape victims, who are obviously to a huge majority female, are then going through a very traumatic experience again as part of the investigation. And I heard uh, one uh, case study on the radio this morning about uh, a rape survivor who didn't get her telephone back for three years, which seems completely unjustified. And um, I don't, you know, there is police training for handling these types of offences, sexual offences, um, but, and I don't doubt the police have good intentions, but, but clearly, as the Information Commissioner has flagged up today, is going wrong. It seems to be going wrong on a regular basis, and I think a lot more guidance needs to be urgently issued because, ultimately, um, we're not dealing with someone who's lost their phone in the pub. We're dealing with victims of rape and sexual assault. So I think a much greater sensitivity um, needs to be used, but we also need to try and do a lot better on rape prosecutions. Yeah. OK, so that's, that's what's happening. Why are the police taking this sort of data, Silky? That is a very good question. Um, I mean, we've been investigating this area and asked the Information Commissioner to do the report that they put out today um, for years because we've been contacted by lots of women who have gone through this process and then find that they are effectively under investigation and not the suspect, um, that masses of their phone data is taken, that they were told it would be kept for 100 years. Um, and you think about what you have on your phone. The information you have on there that police can take is more than they would find in a house search. You've got albums and albums of photos, messages that could stretch over a decade, um, contact lists, um, work emails, so much sensitive data as well. Um, and I think ultimately the, the, the why question, why are police doing this? Well, too often we see that they treat women that report these offences as either mad or bad, that they're either mentally unwell or they're lying. And that's the kind of underlying assumption. It's awful to say it, but that is the underlying assumption too often that they have. And that's why we are now, we, ha we, we have both record numbers of rape and sexual offences being reported and a record failure to prosecute just 1% of rapes are actually being prosecuted. It is a real source of shame. It must be also, Michael, this is in order to protect the, um, the defendant, effectively, the accused. Is this because if there is a message on a woman's phone that says, by, you know, to her friend saying, I slept with this guy last night, I'm slightly regretting it. I mean, look, I'm, I'm character, characterising here these, the stereotype. That's what the police are presumably looking for. Do they have a responsibility to also protect the man, in the majority of cases, who might be accused? Yeah, and I, look, I sort of see both sides of this. The police are going to obviously want as much information as they can possibly get. On the other hand, of course, people should be entitled to privacy. People who have been through an extremely mm. you know, traumatic yeah. attack, yeah. Um, victim of a horrific crime. Um, and, you know, something has gone badly wrong here. I, the statistics I saw were that fewer than 20% of people who are raped report to the police now and a uh, charge rate of 1.6%. So specifically on this crime, there is something clearly going very badly wrong. And, you know, as I said, I do, you know, the, the police argument will be well, we need the maximum mm. amount of information. But on the other hand, I do, I do take on board that people nowadays, they, you know, they have the whole lives on their phones pretty much, don't they? Yeah. You know, very, you know, private photos and things like that, that especially after such a traumatic event in their life, they may be feeling, you know, exceptionally vulnerable anyway. And, and I can't believe, I mean, add this to...